Conspiracy, wartime sabotage or coincidences, this 1940 air crash affected the Australian government in many ways. It was almost a year since World War II had begun and, in England, the Battle of Britain was well underway. But in spite of the number of Nazi planes, the whole nation has complete confidence in our own fighters and with good reason. Our hurricanes and spitfires day after day are breaking up the Nazi formations and shooting down Nazi planes by the score. In 1940, Australia began receiving a hundred new Lockheed Hudson bombers ordered for the Royal Australian Air Force. Several of these were fitted with passenger seating and dual controls for transporting essential stores and personnel to advanced operational bases. The first of these conversions had just seven hours of flight time before it crashed changing history. Australian Government Minister for Air and Civil Aviation, James Fairbairn, had been working at his department headquarters in Melbourne and requested a flight to Canberra in order to attend an important cabinet meeting on defence policy to discuss the allocation of Australian resources in the war. That meeting had been called partially in response to a telegram from Winston Churchill outlining his views on the prospect of war with Japan. James Fairbairn was a pastoralist, an accomplished aviator who served with the Royal Flying Corps during World War I. He was elected to Parliament in 1933. Fairbairn invited other senior officials to join him on the flight. Brigadier Geoffrey Street was Minister for the Army. He was a World War I veteran who had been awarded the Military Cross and was elected in 1938. Sir Henry Gullett was Minister for Information. He was a journalist until his enlistment in 1916, where he became Australia's official war correspondent for the Australian Imperial Force in Palestine. He was elected in 1925. General Sir Cyril Brudenell Bingham White, Chief of the General Staff, a position now known as Chief of Army, had served with the Australian forces in South Africa in 1902 and 03. Richard Edwin Elford, who had a good knowledge of aeronautics, was Fairburn's private secretary. Wanting to stay overnight in Melbourne to celebrate his first wedding anniversary, he traded places with Government Minister Arthur Fadden, who instead took the overnight train. Lieutenant Colonel Francis Fornthwaite, Staff Officer to General White, was an officer in the Australian Army from 1910. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Order and Military Cross for his service during World War I. Two other ministers were invited, but they chose to take the overnight train instead. That was George Maclay, who was Minister of Commerce, and the aforementioned Arthur Fadden, Minister for Supply and Development and Assistant Minister to the Treasurer of Australia. Also planned to take the flight was Prime Minister Robert Menzies. His Assistant Private Secretary, Peter Looker, had reserved two seats on the flight for himself and Menzies, but Menzies also preferred the overnight train, so they did not board. The flight was crewed by Pilot, Flight Lieutenant Robert Hitchcock, Pilot Officer Richard Wisner, Corporal John Palmer, and Aircraftsman Charles Crostall. The flight from Melbourne to Canberra on 13th of August enjoyed fine weather and ideal flying conditions, yet at 10.15am it would crash into a paddock just outside Canberra. The plane was seen by watchers at Canberra Aerodrome and the Air Force Station there to circle the drome and then rise and head south. It disappeared behind a low tree-dotted hill. There was an explosion and a sheet of flame followed by a dense cloud of smoke. After about half an hour, when the fire had died down, it was seen that the entire undercarriage, wings and structural supports of the plane had been torn away and there was a smouldering mass. There were no survivors. The cause of the crash has always been a mystery, although there has never been any suggestion of enemy action or sabotage. James Fairburn still enjoyed flying since his Flying Corps days, and it has been suspected that he may have persuaded the RAF crew to allow him to fly the plane into Canberra. Chillingly, only a week before the accident, Fairburn told an Adelaide headmaster that Hudson bombers have a rather nasty stalling characteristic. From what I have been told, a pilot coming into land can find himself suddenly and without warning in a machine that is no longer airborne, heading straight into the ground. Personally, I think it's only a matter of handling your throttles wisely. The reactions of the Air Force and government were remarkable for their speed and effectiveness. A Department of Air investigation by the 
Air Force's Inspectorate of Air Accidents, headed by Arthur Murphy, concluded on 16th of August, just three days after the crash. Murphy found the plane to be in perfect working order and that there was no option but to attribute the stall to an error of judgment on the part of the pilot. The Air Board conducted a separate inquiry headed by Leon Lachal that concluded that the accident was due to an error of judgment on the part of the pilot. The conclusions of Lachal's reports were immediately disputed by the RAF's Director of Training, George Jones, who stated, I cannot believe that a pilot of Hitchcock's experience would stall the aircraft under the circumstances that apparently existed. Jones would eventually be promoted to Chief of Air Force, from 1942 to 1952. Prime Minister Menzies was deeply affected by the crash, both personally and politically. This was a dreadful calamity, he told the House of Representatives the next day. In the wake of the loss of three senior cabinet ministers, Menzies was forced to reshuffle his ministry. The cabinet was permanently weakened by their loss, and that was a factor undermining Menzies' position in the following months. In August 1942, just 12 months after these events, Menzies stepped down as Prime Minister and was replaced by Arthur Fadden. If you remember, Fadden had chosen not to take the flight. On the 3rd of October, two independents who had been keeping the coalition in office for the past year voted against Fadden's budget. Fadden submitted his government's resignation to the Governor-General later that same day. By coincidence, one of those independents, Arthur Coles, had been elected to Sir Henry Gullett's seat following Gullett's death in the crash. In another twist, Harold Holt was promoted by Menzies in the 1940s reshuffle following the crash and would go on to be Prime Minister in 1966. On the 12th of August 2020, Michael Wooldridge, a former minister of the Australian government, wrote a story for the Australian newspaper. He recalled a discussion he had with Sir Harry White, Australia's first national librarian, whose friend, Norman Tritton, was Prime Minister Menzies' private secretary. Menzies had sent Tritton to the crash site to find out the details. Tritton had told White he had been allowed access to the crash site itself and the body of Fairburn was still strapped into the pilot's seat. We may never know the truth, but what do you think may have contributed or caused the crash of the Lockheed Hudson into a paddock just outside Canberra with the death of all on board? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe.